Rashad. Yes, this was the right choice. Wow, Catalina. That is a, a really interesting way to enter a room. Mm-hmm. Choices were made there. Yeah. Choices were made there. I'm not sure that's how I would enter a room and talk to somebody that I don't know. But you do you. You do you. You know? Everyone has to live their own way, I suppose, right? It does look like I'm eating a croissant. Maybe it's an illusion. Hi, Haley. How are you, sweetheart? <laughs> Maybe it's an illusion. Maybe I'm not actually eating a croissant. Maybe the croissant is made of slime. This is so fluffy. I don't know. I don't know. Did everyone get breakfast while we were gone? Aries, that's exactly right. That's exactly right, Aries. 6 p.m. my time is 9 p.m. Eastern. Yes, 100% correct. Thank you so much for the like. That's very sweet of you, Hunter. My tummy is like adjusting. <laughs> it is thankful. <laughs> it's having a full conversation. It's like, thanks for the croissant. It's so yummy. Aries, don't be sorry for the questions. That your stomach is trying to co-host this live. <laughs> You're funny. I like you. <laughs> that was funny. Um, never be sorry for asking questions, Aries. We love questions. Still no watch. Oh my god, you're right. I could have run upstairs and got the watch in that time. You're right. Why didn't I do that? I didn't even think of that. You look like Kate off working moms. I'm not familiar with that. Is that a compliment or a negative? Or is it because my hair is everywhere that I look like a working mom? I don't even have any children. I'm almost done with this and then we're going to read. How's your croissant, Liz? Delicious. It's a great show. Okay, excellent. Excellent. It's on Netflix. Oh, okay, cool. I have not eaten it yet. You need to eat it. No, the character is always well put together. Oh. Well, that's a lie. I've never well put together. It's warming in the show. Oh, man, I just eat mine straight cold. But you do resemble her. Interesting. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you, person. Um... I can only watch one TV show at a time, and sometimes not even that, but maybe I will check it out when I am done with what I'm currently working on. I'm not making any promises. As you guys know, TV and I do not do well together. Tressa's grab bag last night, you guys, was hilarious. Like, that was genuinely hysterical. And it was made funnier by the fact that there's not even that many Princess Diana Beanie Babies in the grab bag total. Like, you saw the bin. I showed you all. I, I have to post it, right? Like, I showed you the bin. It's not like it's like, oh, 50 Princess Diana Beanie Babies and two of everything else. No, that's not what it was. Like, it's a really evenly distributed grab bag. It was so weird. The one thing she didn't want to see. I mean, it was, that was hilarious. It's a good thing that I'm not like a stickler and I wasn't like, well, you get one reroll, you know, whatever. I was like, no, we're going to let her keep going. 
I can't believe that that kept happening. That was so funny. That was so funny. Um, yeah, that cracked me up. That was really funny. I'm glad we did it because hers was supposed to be on video, not on live, but she was like, just do it on live, whatever I'm here. And it ended up being so much better than it ever would have been on a video because, you know, like when it's live, it's so much more, it, it really happened. Like, cause if I did it on a video, people would be like, there's no way that really happened. You planned it, you edited it, but on live, everyone's like, oh my God, what is happening right now? Um, could not have planned for that. It was real funny. Real freaking funny. Oh man, she pulled every size of that slide. Every size. In the end, it was okay. She got one that she wanted. So it ended up being okay in the end, but it's still funny. It's still funny. I don't see the resemblance with Kate at all. Eh, whatever. You know, there are so many different people that people think I look like. Um, I, I don't know. I think I've told you guys the story before of when I was uh, like... 20 years old and I was in an elevator and some guy was absolutely convinced that I was the girl who plays Meadow from the Sopranos. I was really young at the time and I, I looked way different than I do now. Um, but like, he would not believe me when I told him no. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. I won't tell anyone. And I was like, you can tell anybody you want the, the it's not true. <laughs> like, but, um, I think you look like you, thank you, Beth. But like, it happens all the time. I think I just have one of those faces that people are like, wow, you look like X, Y, Z. I don't know why. Um, it is what it is. Whatever. I don't know. I think I talked to you so much that... Right, right. That's also a very real thing. When you see someone so often, they just become themselves. Like if you see someone walking down the street, you might, in a flash, confuse them for someone else. Hey, Shelly, good morning. Um, but once you're like really inundated with them, which you are... My client showed up. That was a question mark. Your client, I don't even know what that means, Shelly. What do you mean your client showed up? I didn't know you had clients that came in person. What? I'm confused. You look like that one girl who makes slime. Eh. Are any of us in a frame of mind for reading today? I know, we're like a mess, right? We're an absolute mess. Um, your client showed up to a Zoom. I'm good, how are you? Um, okay, let's see how long this chapter is. Maybe we can at least get through one chapter. It's real short. We're gonna read one chapter at least, you guys. We cannot, we have to finish this before John gets home from the boat. We're gonna read right now, chapter 28. <clears throat> the next day I informed Blue, Red, and Sam that they were to accompany me to the rebel base for a lovely chat. When they all vehemently told me they'd rather be eaten alive by snow cats, I told them that I wasn't asking so that they had to go whether they liked it or not. Actually, I asked what snow cats were before I told them to put their church pants on for our rebel meat. And from what I gathered, snow cats are snow leopards the size of polar bears. And if you're wondering about the size of polar bears nowadays, like I was, which is why I asked, then I can inform you that they're still around and now they're about the size of a woolly mammoth. I checked on those too, and apparently they're still extinct. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer. It felt weird being the most powerful person in my squad as we traversed the frozen tunnels because they were all rocking battle armor and towering over me while I was in my jumpsuit and long coat. Sam just looked like a really big guy because his armor was covered by his signature dingy yellow coat over his exosuit, while the girls were both in their rusty red raptor sixes. We had traveled about an hour before Red decided to drop the bomb that they didn't exactly know where the rebels were located. Well, we know the general area, Blue added after I looked at her sister like she was a lunatic. We've just never had a real reason to show up uninvited. I'll say, Sam grumbled. That white-suited Sheila's a real crock to go up against. Almost lost a leg to her. Who? I asked. He's talking about your girlfriend, Red said while she led us through the darkened tunnels. Nodding, Sam said, she totes around a massive sword. It's a little trigger happy with it, if you know what I mean. She gets a real rush out of severing limbs, I always thought. I thought you guys didn't fight with them, I said, trying to think of all the rogues Piper might have put down over the years. It's more of an understanding than a truce, Red told me, taking the right into the tunnel bur burrowed through the ice. Unlike the paved walkway we had just been on, well, we agreed to stay out of each other's way, there's a reason that we came to that understanding, mate. I still don't know why you're so dead on this union thing, Blue muttered. I couldn't help but recall our incident in the lab yesterday. Whatever she may have said, I knew why Blue didn't want to meet with the rebels. Piper. 
I know, Sam threw in. Your damn lightning nuke thing. We don't need the rebels to know that you're here, mate. Guys, I don't know if any of you have thought about it, but how do you think that we, the group of women and children, are going to free Flagstaff from not only the Reds, but also the Bears and the Fascists who make daily pit stops here? No one said anything. The Rebels have more of a grip than we do, whether you like it or not. Being a warring faction means that they're not plagued by the thought of where their next meal is going to come from. I know I'm a powerhouse, and I mean that in the least conceited way possible, but we need to stick with what we know. The rebels were just like the rogues not three years ago, and I know that because I was there. My companions were still silent. The only sound besides my voice was our echoing footsteps resounding down the abandoned tunnel. If anyone thinks the bears, fascists, or reds will know how we feel and be more hospitable than the rebels, go ahead and speak up now. We don't just need soldiers, Blue said. Her face turned away from me. You're right there, Blue, I told her. We need an unholy amount of them. Firepower isn't everything, Sam said. I stopped walking, causing all of them to stop and look at me. What do you want the rogues to accomplish? Sam frowned. What do you mean, Jerry? I mean, I am here now, placed in command by you guys, I said, pointing at them. I don't know if any of you, what any of you want from me, but if it's to save the rogues, I'm just telling you what we need to do. Do people not realize that we don't have drama during book club? What was the drama? Why do we, why do we having drama? Who's drama? I thought everything was going really nicely. Did I look down for two seconds and somebody came in and tore everything to shreds? We were all very happy. We made marshmallow fluff. It was delicious. I ate a croissant, also delicious. Nothing. Listen, I told them, trying to sound less agitated. This is the part where you guys ask me where I get off telling you what to do, and I get it. But the only way to save the rogues is to take Flagstaff from the Reds. Blue's eyes widened, Red's mouth dropped, while Sam grinned from ear to ear. Yeah, he said, pumping a fist into the air. Jericho, Red started to say, you know it's true, I told her, crossing my arms. What did you guys think I was going, to sprout mighty wings and start carrying the rogues away on a mass exodus? There are tens of thousands of them, Blue said bluntly. It's impossible. Shrugging, I walked past them. Nah, I said, just gotta hit them where it hurts. 1%, oh my gosh, 1%, what the heck? Becca, plug your phone in. Red fell into step behind me. And just where is that open, unarmored sweet spot, Jericho? She asked, sarcasm evident. I'm so glad that you asked, Red. I answered, my own sarcasm on display. Sadly, I don't know where it is yet. And then I glanced over my shoulder at them, smiling. But I know a bat-crazy Sheila, who surely does. There wasn't much talking after that, and I was wondering whether or not I might need to apologize for my gruff. Instead, I decided to try and change the subject that was still hanging in the air. So, how are we going to find the rebels if we don't know where they are? Don't worry, mate, Sam said, nodding his knowing nod with his eyes closed. They'll find us in a few minutes, I'd say. There wasn't a movie slash TV show slash novel slash comic book slash whatever story you care to think of where someone said that sentence while carousing through dark underground tunnels, and it didn't end badly. I'd like to tell you guys that my tale is completely different, fresh and original from anything you've ever heard, seen, or read. I would really love to not have to tell you that as soon as the words left Sam's mouth, red dots began appearing all over me and my troops. Well, what do you know? Blue said under her breath in an uninterested tone, raising her armored hands into the air. That took longer than I thought. Rose, halt! An amplified voice blared and more laser dots crawled all over us. State your name and business here. With my hands high, I walked a few more steps forward and a bright light shined on me. My name's Jericho Johnson, I called to them. And tell Beck not to worry, we'll wipe our feet. In less than two minutes, word of my arrival must have gone up the chain of command and reached Beck's synthetic ears because the targets literally painted us uh, painted on us vanished after that and we escorted them through the large rusted gate into the rebel base. Business, a battle armored guard asked me roughly brandishing his assault rifle like, I don't know, like he actually thought it would make me talk or something. I shook my head. Nope, get back. I don't think you heard me, he said dangerously. Uh, excuse me. I don't think you heard me, he said dangerously in his accent, thick Russian. I hadn't heard one of those in a while. And come to think of it, state your business here now, he finished with the cocking of his gun. In a nanosecond, I wrenched the weapon from his hands and punched him square in the chest of his black suit, sending him skidding on the ice floor in his two buddies, into his two buddies, and all three of them ended up on the ground in a tangled heap of battle armor. 
I don't know, is it me in my kitchen, a small business? I don't know what that means. What? Will you be like above board? I missed something. I really missed something. I'm just gonna read and we can talk about it after. No, I don't think you heard me, bro. I told him keeping my tone good natured and snapping his rifle in half like a twig. I said, go get Beck. I would not pay anything for a dozen cookies. Um, sorry, but I guess it depends on if it was a special occasion or not, but I really wouldn't buy a dozen cookies. I don't think ever, even when I ate sugar, I don't think I ever bought a dozen cookies except for people at work when it was their birthdays. And they were usually like somewhere in the range of $35 if we were having a party and I was buying cookies for the party in New York. Yeah. Usually in the $35 range for like those big ones. No, I don't think you heard me, bro. I told him, keeping my tone good-natured and snapping his rifle in half like a twig, dropping pieces on the ground. I said, go get back. My team had already pulled their weapons at the first sign of attacking, but I held my hand up easy, guys. Easy, Red said. You hit the bloke first. Yeah, well, I hate repeating myself. I said, crossing to the guards that I'd just gotten a perfect strike on and pulling the man up by his right arm. Now that we've established our male dominance, how about you take me to your leader, Rebel? Well, I heard a woman say to my right, and I turned to see the rebel leader herself standing at the top of a flight of stairs with a smirk on her face. Jericho Johnson. Looks like someone's been learning the proper way of playing house. What's this? Or what, this? I asked, releasing the guard I was trying to help up and letting him fall back onto his downed comrades. Nothing you haven't seen before, Beck. I'm sure, she said, glancing at my team while descending on the steps slowly, her synthetic hips swaying slightly. And though she moved in an almost liquid manner, I knew the amount of power she was packing. You've certainly been busy making new friends. For a dead person, I mean. I walked towards her while taking in her appearance. She didn't look sick like she had in the hollow chat I witnessed a few months ago, but about the same, buzz cut and all. I met her halfway up the steps and she stopped in front of me, accepting the hand I held out and squeezing it squeezing the ever-loving Helheim out of it. So I squeezed back. Her never-changing, bright blue, cat-like eyes brightened when she felt the pressure I was applying, and her smile broadened. Not too shabby. Tell me, love, are they mass-producing you yet? Because if so, I'll take four. Not yet, I informed her. They seem to have run into a hiccup of sorts in the dashing good looks department of the assembly line, but God knows they're trying. Releasing my hand, Beck once again turned her attention to the rogues with me. Red, she said politely, nodding her head. Beck, Red said, returning the nod. I believe I told you the next time we met I would kill you, Beck said, cocking her head slightly. Ring any bells? A few, Red replied simply, and I could tell she was having trouble not attacking the female synthetic right then and there. I'm only here because of Jericho. Ah, yes, Jericho, Beck said dramatically. Don't tell me they have you calling the shots. Let's talk, I told her. How about you convince me that you're worth my time first? Beck shot at me. Good old Beck. I tried to play nice, but she had to go and get herself right at the front door. I get that, Beck, I said, nodding understandably. I mean, I know that if I was going to die in a few months, I'd make sure that all my conversations were meaningful too. Her smirk faltered. Bingo. So tell me, how does knowing that make me want to talk, how does knowing that make me want to talk to you again? I pulled off my hood, because I can fix you. Beck narrowed her eyes at me for a few seconds before turning around and heading back up the steps. Come on, she said, and you can bring your feral rogue friends with you if you like. Just don't expect them to get a warm welcome. Mm. All right, the next chapter's kind of long, and as Amanda said, I do not think any of us are in the mindset to really focus. So we'll just have one chapter for today because we seem to be off kilter which is totally fine um yeah slime day it is slime day 
It's slime day, it's slime day, it's slime day. I'm wishing now that I had set the restock for five o'clock and not six o'clock so that I could get more stuff packaged tonight, but it is what it is. Um, spicy brain day. It is a spicy brain day. Slimes tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's exactly right. Do I want a roll for slime or create your own? Oh, Tiffany, the decisions. I know it's a lot of decision making. Maybe both. Por qué no los dos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I found another one. Shake though, so it's still new. What? Lava lamps look great, by the way. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. How far in advance do you need a party order? I would love at minimum a month. Like that would be like the bare minimum that I could really handle right now. Like I'm current, I'm about, as soon as this restock is over, I'm about to make one to mail out on the 15th for a party that's at the beginning of June, but it's cloud, so it'll last. Um, but she emailed me last month. I think I felt a little more in love with the Porque Nelos Dos. <laughs> Thank you, Elite. Um, uh, if I do a roll for slime, can I request some miscellaneous scent category? Sure. Yeah. Why not? I'll do that for you. For you, anything. I actually haven't remade the, maybe we'll do that later today, like make the new papers for the new roll for slimes. I haven't done that yet because it's like different stuff now because I ran out of some of the stuff that was in the previous one and I got new stuff and whatever, yada, yada. Oh, if it's in July, will you email me like at the end of May and we'll put it together, Amanda? I can definitely do that for you because I'm working on them in like that kind of order. Um, you guys don't see them all so uh, on live wiggle eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe I'll do that um, like early afternoon maybe to have it done before, before restock. I don't know. Maybe we could do that. All right, I'm gonna go and get stuff done. And if I have time, we will do Body Double Live this afternoon. Um, I will see you all on the flip side. It's a busy day for us here. So, bye.